I got the back safety piece installed. I haven't yet tightened these bottom bolts down there. I was tightening these. I was using the Allen wrench on the back side, using the other wrench on the other side. Tightened all four of them. It says to tighten hard to make sure that there's no safety accidents or whatever. And this happened. Yep, I don't know my own strength. Hopefully I don't need this anymore. <laughs> to break wrench after using to ensure no one can disassemble your catwalk seat. <laughs> I like this design here. It's really cool. This flare on the outside is really neat. Some more bad news. This rubber thing ripped a little bit. I guess when I pulled it up, or maybe it was already ripped from shipping. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't get worse. If it does, maybe we can get a replacement part in the future. Do not pull this up without lifting it away from the metal base because the metal base is very sharp on the corners. You gotta make sure that you're pulling this away and then lift it if you have this. That way it won't rip. I really like this addition here to hold these bars together. It feels really nice. I like these magnetic charging cables. These are really cool. These were a stretch goal the Kickstarter. They got magnets on them so they stay attached. What I don't like is this. I don't know why these cables are underneath. It feels like those are gonna be smashed. Get all the weight on top and I don't really like that. But I don't know if it's supposed to be underneath because of the foot support later on that will get installed. So I guess we'll see. I might consider cutting those ties and putting it over top if it'll allow for it. Oh, you know what? That's not too bad. These rubber feet at the bottom holding that up so it's not getting smashed. Now one thing to note when you move this around, make sure you have two people. Otherwise these rubber feet will come out really easily and they are a pain to put back in. Look what I found. Underneath this looks like something special. Is that a motor? Maybe. A vibration? Maybe. This looks pretty similar to the old one, but it has this nice UA flare on it. Oh, this is kind of annoying. The back plate is on. It's down all the way. Make sure that these foot things are all the way in. But this plate right here that connects to the back harness is not level. You can see it's not the way it should be. I think there's a way to adjust it after you attach the back harness, but that's kind of not ideal. And there's no way to rotate that. Also, the instructions are not entirely clear which one to put the support rod into. This is set to be 5.9, which is pretty low. And I believe it's the top one, it's not the bottom one. That makes more sense, but it's not entirely clear because you got these top ones that are connected and the bottom ones are connected too. So I'm pretty sure it's the top one. I'm not having much luck with this unit. So I tried to put it on and I was testing it out to see how little I can go. I went to the bottom. And then I heard a weird springy noise, and that springy noise is holding this up. So, if I let go, if I let go, then it goes down automatically. Uh, I tried looking for something in the back, and there's nothing in there. Nothing came out. I think it's just the springy unit in there. I had a spring or something come loose. So it wasn't an issue with the back plate. I just can level this out based on how I install it. But this is a problem. It's not working. Okay, so Kat Zia got back to me and they said that this wire came unattached. This wire here. So I should be able to just pull that down with this wind up thing up here. It goes all the way down to this silly thing that holds the harness up. Just get that down there, connect it, and then it should be good, hopefully. All right, let's get to know how to fix this. Lift the harness to the top, and then you can use like a screwdriver or some other thing like the Allen wrench. You gotta get this wire, it'll be all, all the way up to the top here. Get that pulled down and then move that metal plate open. And just have to pull it open towards you this way. You pull that plate towards you and then get the wire to go underneath that wheel down there. You have to work through the different holes like the top hole over here and in here. I use that hole to actually get it to go around that wheel. Having two people is very uh, helpful and recommended so someone can hold the harness up because this is heavy. The other person can work on getting the wire in. Yay! No, it's fixed. I did not know that's what it was. I thought it was some kind of spring in there. I couldn't see the spring in this. This seat attachment is just kind of dumb. So there's this rubber layer and that's supposed to go on the rod, but I don't think they accounted for this rubber layer thickness. So there's no way to get that on there without it mangling the rubber up and pushing it and bending it, smooshing it and making it bubble up everywhere. So probably have to remove one of these sides since it won't go in there anyway with it and then try it that way, see how it works. I'll make it look so easy in the video. But look at this. So it's at the edge there. If I start pushing and try and get that on, it's just not wanting. 
to make it. Maybe somebody who's super crafty you might be able to put that on without any issues, but I can't see how it'll be done. And as I said in my previous video, this whole seat attachment kind of feels like an afterthought. But I removed the rubber siding on both sides of the seat, and it slides on there a lot easier. So we want to compare before we decide to do anything. Take a look at this. This was in the box that was with the seat. Take a look at that. Let's see if that matches up. This one slides on really easily. It makes sense to have this rubber backing there, but not on the walls. So this goes on the inside. I'm just showing it goes on really easily. It's an easy way to compare it. Before you take off these rubber sidings, you might want to just do one at a time and see if it makes any difference. Not really think that those are unnecessary. So I'm going to just clean this up and then get that installed. So I got this cleaned up a bit. Not entirely. There's still bits to go in there. But no one's going to see it. This is the result of the rubber taking off of the bracket thing. It's made the installation so much easier. I don't recommend these because it's near impossible to put these on with the rubber walls that were in there. Rubber on this side should stay, but the rubber on the edges is not needed, in my opinion, in this picture makes the design. Honestly, it makes more sense for this stretchy band now. It kind of flattens out. That works. Feels like it should lock in place, but it makes sense that it doesn't because when you get up, it's supposed to lift on its own. This fabric unit still is kind of loose. So it might fall out and dangle every once in a while. Okay, so left part of the seat. Just to push back, not going back all the way. So that kind of works. So just let it go. But here, it's kind of sticking. This one is looking better on the right side. And then just let it go here. The other one, I don't know if it's just too tight, needs to be loosened, or needs more lubrication or something. The other patch is falling out of there. So with repeated standing and sitting, there it goes. Dang, dang, by the wires. If the seat does not retract on its own all the way, then loosen up the screw down here just a little bit, and then it will work fine. So it's working fine now. Bring it all the way back. But another problem came up with this. When it goes down all the way, it has a spring underneath this fabric right down here. And a plastic piece right here. That's attached to the fabric. You can see it kind of move with the fabric. Okay. This one, no good. There's a thread. As I say, that hole goes all the way out of the other side. I don't know how it gets attached, but this is not even connected anymore. There's still a spring in there. It's a plastic piece. still fabric, but it's not connected. It does stand in my way. So what will go wrong next? I guess we'll see. Okay, first we can actually get one of these. Yeah, all these bike locks to lock it up from underneath. I don't want to get my gouge on the last time that gap. Tie it to this moving part, and then also there's a bar underneath that. Loop it around the moving part that rotates, and also a bar underneath. And then that prevents it from spinning around from uh, random kids that like spinning on playground things. So you just take that bolt, lock it, change the code if you want to. And then it doesn't move around. And the kids have no more fun. Alright, got the catwalk all assembled. We got a little baby what? who likes playing on it too. So this is all put together. Got this fixed, which is awesome. Got the little wire back there attached to the pulley. So that's staying in place, which is great. The back plate here supporting the harness. I got that leveled out. When I put the harness in, just shifted it a little bit when I tightened the bolts. The only problem now is just this. I'll see how that can be fixed. The hardest part was putting the feet on. These bolts are super annoying to put in. So I figured the best way to do it that helped me to put these in a lot quicker was I moved the foot into place and then I used my phone, this thing, to look into the hole to make sure it was as aligned as possible. Just move it around to make sure the holes are all straight. Put the bolt in. There's actually two sides of the washer. The washer has like a slightly more sharp side and slightly more rounded side. So I started putting the rounded side where it's touching the bolt, the sharper side flat against the base here. And I just turned it counterclockwise a little bit, make sure it's resting in place. And then using the Allen wrench, I had to press down on the little elbow. Part. Press down on that pretty hard as you turn, and that allows it to go through a lot quicker and easier instead of biting it, turning it around and around and around. That got these all in place. I don't really like the gaps between these. I wish it had more of a locking system, but it's not too bad. It, it's mostly aesthetic. The feet, though, they do a metal pieces that come out underneath the plastic that hold this place more, keep it more stable. One thing I found interesting is compared to the old Catwalk C model, this one does not have the leveling feet. 
old one had these leveling feet you can unwind and get to the base of the ground and then you can lock them in place with another washer this one doesn't have that at all so i guess maybe they didn't find that it was necessary the harness kind of spins around on its own when you're in the harness it doesn't really matter too much it's a little bit unlevel i don't think it makes that much difference when you're playing the game because you're in control there's a lot more than gravity is oh and i have to say cat vr has been great with their support i was really feeling very disappointed with a lot of things with how it was going but they've been helping so much with fixing things and making this work out really well they're sending me a free replacement rubber gasket here because of this rip in the corner caused by who knows what the other things that i mentioned to them they addressed as well so they've been really good with their support which I'm happy for. Testing out the walking without the sensors. So we backtracked a tad! This is a really nice feature. I like this little safety. Rip that up and then it's less likely to slip around. Adds a little bit more friction so you don't slip and slide as much. Seems like it should have a slightly more sticky type material. It's kind of slippery still. Kind of like this bottom of the shoe but not, not as slippery as this. The walking feels really good. Just testing it out. Clean forward. Clean forward and walk. All the way down to the base in a shooting game. I'm not gonna swim in this. No way. Why? Because it's very uncomfortable and I don't see a purpose for it personally. One thing I noticed with that center piece, the catwalk symbol, when the wheels go over that, it feels a little bit bumpy. I don't think it's a big problem, especially if you're walking with a little bit more of a wide stance. But uh, the seat's really nice. Just put this down and then when I get up, it just goes up on its own. It's not in the way, which is really nice. I can spin around while I'm in this. A little thing that's a little bit weird is when you're sitting in this, your feet are pretty close to the edge of the platform. So it's hard to move your feet back. So it makes sense that when you're in the seated mode, you just swipe your foot like you're on a skateboard and then it makes you move forward. And then you can turn around in some games at least. I'm not sure how many games that will support. But also being able to sit down and take a rest is really nice instead of having to stand up all the time. So that's a really good feature. Overall, I'm actually getting pretty excited about this to test it out, see how the sensors work, if it makes any difference in the PSVR games or not. Regardless, having more range of movement to be able to go all the way down to the base is really nice. This cable has an issue. It decided to fray. There's this extra thing, extra line. I have no idea where that's coming from. It's just like a plastic cover or what. But up here, you can see it's all frayed. And I don't see any reason why that would happen. Like, functionally, this should be able to go up to the very top. It's got a little bit of a bend there, but it has a groove on this metal plate. You can see it shouldn't bend or pinch it too much. Ideally, that should be right underneath this pulley, though. It's a little bit better designed. I'd be to have this pulley moved over to the right a little bit, or to have this cable wheel down here moved right underneath the pulley. So if it's that, it might be a problem going forward in the future, but I don't think it is. I'm down to the right bottom. Wonderful noise. Nothing down here that would cause it to break or fray or anything either. Like that looks good. If you look at it right here, it's at the bottom, and then you turn this up. You see it kind of moves to the right a little bit more until it gets to the right top. But I don't know why it's fraying and breaking like it is. I emailed Cat VR to see if I can just order a replacement for this part since it's all housed in here. It should be really easy to disassemble a little wrench, take out the old pulley, take out this connection at the end, run that through, and then get a new one installed. Hopefully, we can just order this replacement part. Let's see if they decide to ship it to me at no cost, like they're doing with the boots. The blue boots at the bottom. I'm just gonna send me a pair of those because that one on the left ripped. So, support's been really good. I'm just concerned that this might happen in the future. And it happened after I sat down and the seat stood up and then I just heard this weird crinkling noise, like crunching metal. That's where I'm at right now. And the good news, oh, I got the sensors. And that was an awesome timing for that sound effect. <laughs> you drove almost a sixth of the way across the country in the wrong direction. I have to ship it separately because there's batteries in it. Here is the box in a box. Let's have another box. Anti-dust cover. That's nice. All right. There's the sensor for the pack support. And then sensors for the shoes. Dust covers. That's nice. And then there's...
is a little dust brush if you need to brush out any lint or whatever talks in there. So the dust cover actually does fully cover that sensor there because we've got a little plug that goes in that hole. This part, it looks like it's just to charge it while it's being protected. That's the charging connector. We have power! Look at that fanciness. It's so cool looking. Love it. As I would say. After installing the Cat Gateway software, the light turned on brighter. Look at it. It's like Christmas. Christmas is here early in October or end of September, depending on when you get it. Maybe later. I really like how you can plug in this direction sensor while it is connected to the back support. And these are really cool. I like these covers and I just have to take this off. Take out the sensor covers and you can just put this little magnetic charging cable on that. It snaps in and then you can just cover it up like that. It's really nice. Cat VR delivered this to me today. We got these new boots. This is actually really good. Thick rubber. The thick rubber should be resistant to tearing. I also got a replacement of the pulley. I'll show that in a minute. And I was surprised by this. They gave me a whole seat. Brand new seat. You can see on the inside, it's got the threading. And I got this off. This is the old pulley. This is a little bit strange. So these holes don't really line up on all of it, just on the top part. So there's two longer screws that go through the top. And then there's two shorter screws in the bottom. The shorter screws don't go through the pulley. They just go through this metal plate. And for some reason, this one on the left side when I'm facing the unit on the back is silver. It's got like a special star on it. So you look at the bottom of these, there's the gold one is on the right and the silver one is on the left when facing it. I'm not sure why they are different ones. Here's the old pulley. This is its wonderful sound. That metal is all frayed there and the plastic covering came apart. And I was getting the tools out to take the back plate off of the back support. Uh. I found this. Not the baby. <laughs> the baby was already here. Hey, what are you doing? All right, so I uh, found this other thing. This is for the wire cable management. This looks similar, slightly different. The thickness is a little bit more on the cable management one. And obviously it's got this 3M sticker on the back. One key difference is the weeping, the weighting of it. This is very loose and light. This one for the harness has got a lot more pressure to it. So when installing this pulley, you make sure that this wire is coming down on the left side and these top screws need to go into the pulley. Bottom screws are in the plate. This screw in the bottom left, this will not go in here because there's not enough space on the back. I'll we'll need to put that screw in first, put this on afterwards, and then tighten it out of the, the correct procedure here. Put the plate on and the screws in the bottom, bolt it in place, tighten with the seven millimeter and then we'll put the pulley in. This is a little bit tricky to get in here. Some tips, you put it in, keep these two bolts loose and then you can move this plate forward and you'll slide this pulley in. You probably have to put it on the right side so the screws can go to the back and not be blocked by this. And then you can slide it over, put it in, and once you get this in and get it tightened a bit, it's not all the way tightened yet, you can use this little tab here and put the loop of the cable on there and then you can just pull it on through. One of the corners, and then it'll connect there with the little screw. And use these to tighten that Allen wrench type bit. Three sixteenths. This is also a little tricky piece. There's these two little fasteners for this wire, and you need to use the very small Allen wrench to get in there, tighten it. You have to loosen it first. One was further up here, and the other one was near the end where the loop was. So you have to loosen one up and send it all the way through, and it's hard to get it through this part, but just make sure it's loose enough to get onto both ends of the wire, and then you can tighten it up, and it'll be good. Another thing with these bolts here, it's hard to tighten these all the way because the screws are on the back, so if you get something flat to put on the screw back there, hold it in place, just a little bit of resistance. If you tighten these with the seven millimeter socket, it'll make it a lot easier. And you can tighten it at least enough to hold it in place. I don't know if it's completely tight, but it's kind of the best I could do. Possibly a flat head screwdriver might fit back there. Extra plastic pieces they gave her at the bottom of the seat. The top part was the issue, so I don't need these. When putting this on, it's a little bit tricky with the fabric in this spring. If it's shaped like a screw, you can kind of twist it along as you work this on slowly, and it'll be a lot easier. Didn't record this part of it, but pretty self-explanatory, this little screw screw here and then it's got this bigger allen wrench that goes straight in there. You just loosen it up, it slides off and then you just put it back on and tighten it. Alright. <laughs> no. So you just take off these uh... <laughs> take off these sensor covers here. <laughs> 